All right, we're now pretty much ready for Shante. So uh, do give me one second though, because after the after the transition, we will have to do some very quick more audio balancing due to the uh, little bit different audio capture setup this time. So do give me a second. I'm still here. Yep. Oh, I'm still here. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Sorry about it. So Thanks. the problem is that due to the Discord audio capture, I essentially have to do audio balancing on the fly, but we're pretty much ready to go here. Let me... Yeah, I should probably get their audio on stream too. That might be a great idea. <laughs> Alright, yeah. I am using Goof for, for your reference GT. I'm using Goof for your audio, but... Yeah, if you need to introduce anything before this run starts, then... <laughs> please go ahead. Hey, no worries. So, are we live? Yep, we're live. We're live, you're on. Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, half GD hero race. This is going to be done in our in the DLC mode for costumes. And uh, the last one that was released eh, by way forward was a free one called Jammy's Mode. It's probably one of the more fun ones of the actual costume modes that will be done. And uh, these two phenomenal runners are going to be displaying their skills for you today. So hopefully you guys will sit back, relax, and enjoy. And... Uh, those comfy pajamas don't put you all to sleep at this late hour, at least for right. some parts of the, uh, the world. All right, and uh, before we start, uh, I would just like to point out we got another donation. We got, um, we got, I believe, yeah, okay, so this is not actually what it listed, but I got a DM from him. I got, we got a donation from Burgers, who is going to be racing me in the next run, saying, George is going down. I will win. George is going down. So, uh,. I don't know these strategies about trash talking your opponent in a donation, but let's find out after this run, right? <laughs> let's find Sounds out like after this run. Sounds like the gauntlet's been thrown down. You're gonna have to defend yourself, George. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we're ready to start here. So I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna give. I believe Benja. Yeah, Benja. I'm gonna give Benja the call to start. So let me do that quickly. Uh oh, wait, hold up. Um, I ca I kind of forgot about this because Benji and Goofy aren't in a voice call. <laughs> so how am I gonna do this? Um. Uh crap. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drag these two back in quickly. <laughs> Give it. them a countdown. That would be good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I I've never done Discord audio capture during a run before. I'm sorry. Um. So. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Sorry, but yeah, it wouldn't be tech issues. I hope they see this because they're okay. There, there they are. Good. Okay. Um, sorry about this, but I can't. I, I know it. I know it. I know Hi, it. I kind of forgot about the part where I have to count both of you down. So, and I, I, I wasn't sure if Goofy was gonna check his DMs. So, uh, Goofy, do uh, check your DMs as well. I'm gonna count both of you down if that's fine. Okay. All right. Uh... And good luck on the run. Okay. Thanks. We're ready now. <laughs> yep, we're ready now. So let me count both of these run us down and then. Uh, Did they just leave the voice again? Uh, yeah, I just. Because uh, we can't be in a voice call. Alright, let me get the audio back on. Cool. Alright. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, two. Two, one, one. All right, they should be starting now anytime, so hopefully it's safe. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll get this race underway then. Yep. Sorry for the delay, everyone, but uh, we're going to get this going here. So again, as I said, this is part of the uh, Costumes DLC for the Half Genie Hero. It comes with the Ultimate Edition, which Ben is running on. Goofy is running on the Steam PC version of the game. And it just starts off with Shantae basically realizing that she wants to have a little bit of a slumber party. So she needs to collect some friends for that to, to make it happen. So we're going to go on a little adventure here. Uh, just to kind of talk about some movement there, uh, you'll notice on both sides, you'll 
see them jump, but then immediately convert into a cloud. A cloud is a floating mechanic, but if you jump and catch your upward momentum while going to the cloud, you'll actually keep your upward momentum, which will shoot you up over these guys without any problems. If you were to just hit the cloud, she'd just lazily float into it. So a little bit of a speed tech thing there to be able to get through some tight gaps. Uh, unfortunately, Goofy was a, uh, caught by one of those starfish, which now is going to cascade a little bit on him here. Uh, but, you know, a few shakes and a few whips and, and you're going to get rid of it. So it's just basic platforming right now. Um, one of the main things you're going to see them doing throughout this entire first segment right now is collecting as many gems as possible while avoiding taking damage. Uh, all of the costume mode DLCs have this exact same mechanic where there's a level system where you basically get a little bit more powerful with the more levels you get. And the only way you get those levels is by actually getting some gems. So ideally what they're going to want to do before they reach the first boss, which is a couple of screens from now, is they're going to be in the level three, potentially level four area, if at all possible to do that. And uh, you'll see, obviously, Benja there using the, one of the main weapons that Shantae uses in this particular one of those bouncy sheep. They're quite sheepish, if you ask me, but uh, they're also extremely powerful. So I definitely want to have the higher levels because the higher level you get, the more of those sheep you can put out there. And you're going to see just how much damage those things can do um, when used properly at a higher level here. All right, so they got through the first screen, no problem. They're now in Burning Town uh, and, again, are trying to conserve as much gem power as possible by getting their levels up here. They're going to be stopping for some really good gem-rich pots to be able to really get that level jacked up as much as possible. Looks like Goofy's having a little bit of trouble maintaining his right now. Uh, Benja's pretty much in a good spot right now at about 139 gems, getting ready to go into the, uh, the fight here. Goofy looks like he's entering about a level two, so Benja's got a slight advantage for this particular boss um, going away, but there is a chance to get a few more gems every time he hits the spell, and hopefully he can gain an extra level here. But uh, you're about to find out just how quickly these bosses melt with that. So you can see they're bouncing the sheep through there, and as they stay in the hitbox, they just basically tick 10 points of damage each one. And the boss just completely is eradicated by the use of the sheep, along with, you know, Shantae's actual pillow, which I'm not sure what it's stuffed with, but I'm going to imagine that she actually likes her pillows very hard, considering the amount of damage that she's putting on there. Uh, <laughs> so, at any rate, first boss, no challenge whatsoever. They're through the first world, and... Uh, at least from my perspective, we had a really close race. Goofy may be slightly ahead, um, but not by a whole lot. Well, actually, no. If I look at the stream, it looks like Bench has got a slight lead. So, again, there's a, a, an off-kilter delay on my end, but I'm doing the best I can here. All right. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next area. Uh, next world is uh, basically a mermaid land. Uh, a lot of mermaids and stuff live here. And, again, Cloud's just going to easily get them over a lot of perilous things there. Goofy doing a good job dodging the spawning of that one mermaid so he didn't have to wait uh, for the projectiles to get by. Uh, and again, using that upward momentum mechanic with the clouds to be able to try to ascend quickly. Uh, and then, of course, using the sheep to eradicate anything in the way. That's one of a couple of different strats that I've seen people use to get through there. All right, so, again, this cloud makes it really easy to get through this particular stage without you know, too much issue. Uh, you just basically, again, are trying to conserve that, that gem count. So taking no hits is very key uh, in order to make sure that you're ready for each boss as you get there. And uh, speaking of negating the intended mechanics with the, sleep, with the cloud here, you're going to see them kind of skip the kind of the auto scroller-ish things with the rings and the conveyor belts, although it is slightly slower movement than the rings, so they'll probably use them, you know, as they see an advantage to do so. They're also wanting to make sure that they do stop to get some money and uh, do what they can with this particular one here. So they're both going to be climbing up this stage. Yes, sir. All right, I'll take that as good then. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, I had to look over and I saw that, so it kind of threw me off a little bit. At any rate, so they're coming, they, they basically negated a lot of the climbing mechanics with these particular ones, so it was uh, easy for them to get up to the top of this particular segment. You see, again, these sheep doing work, really clearing that hallway out, those guys. And wreck your day a little bit if you want. Again, they want to conserve that gem count and their level as much as possible. So they are uh, 
definitely looking to make sure that they have everything possible if they get to the, as they go into the auto scroller of this particular one. Uh, the cloud really kind of negates a lot of this, and I guess one mechanic that I should talk about that you're going to see used in this is um, there's a limited amount of time that you can actually float on said cloud. Uh, it does wear out over time. However, if you jump out of it, which you are allowed to do, it allows you to re-trigger the cloud again. So as you can see, Bencha right now, he's just basically flying over the entire level. He's maxed out on levels. He doesn't need anything out of this one. So the safest play is to stay away from everything that can potentially cause him damage and lose that level. And he's just going to fly over that. And you see Goofy is now doing it as well. So yeah, this poses absolutely no threat whatsoever. There's a high enough ceiling that the projectiles that the Gator guys are throwing there aren't going to reach up and be able to hit them as long as they can maintain this jumping rhythm. And then uh, at the end, you just drop down. There's no danger whatsoever. We'll finish off the auto scroller, no problem. All right, so we've got Benchup currently going into our next boss, everyone's favorite, uh, Iga Mermaid. Uh, she's just uh, she's just captured. You know, no worries, no worries for that. And um, we're gonna quickly try to take that down. So the mechanic there is to throw those sheep off to the right, just because it easily busts one of the locks while he goes ahead and clears out what's left on the on the left hand side, and then very quickly manages the other locks. Very good fight from Benja on that side uh, to make sure he didn't take any damage from any of the things that Mermaid can do very quickly got those down and got her into the second phase and then second phase is definitely no threat get up in her face throw a few sheeps launch a pillow shot and then yeah she's pretty much out for the count so again really 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 good fight from benja on that side goofy had one hit i think yes sir okay oh. you're killing you're, you're killing me, George. You're killing me. <laughs> well, while they fix that side, at least I'm pretty sure that I am watching the correct streams, hopefully. Um, Benja obviously has moved on. Goofy's moved on, and currently Benja's going to go ahead and just make easy work of the desert stage. Much like you just did on the auto scroller, very similar mechanic, but you'll actually be able to see what's going on this time. Uh, if him jumping out of the cloud float and then just being able to re-trigger it without having to worry about anything there. As long as he maintains a good rhythm, he doesn't have to land down there where he could potentially take some damage. The only thing you gotta look out for is the occasional RNG bird and, and where they're at so that he doesn't uh, take a hit from any one of them. And then, you know, they may land once in a while because, you know, why not? So you get to at least enjoy the cute, the cute images of Shantae sleeping very briskly in the cloud. If only we could all sleep that way or fall asleep that fast. Oh no, Goofy just lost uh, lost his uh, aerial there, landed down, took a hit. Uh, she's got plenty of opportunity to get gems here. There are gems to war up top on this particular stage, so he'll be easily be able to get his level back up. And he just wants to make sure he gets his uh, HP up as well, because the next area is a little, a little perilous. Uh, we've got to basically go into this particular tower and start our way up. Yeah, alas, she does have magic, and it's so good. All right, so here's the tower climb. And it's a chase scene, basically. It's not really an auto scroller. You can get up this as fast as possible, so you're not worried about that. One thing you got to worry about is this worm does have some major rubber banding with him, so it really doesn't matter how fast you go up there. He tends to always be there when you don't want him to be. So again, using that jump mechanic where they jump and immediately fall in the cloud to be able to keep that upward momentum with the cloud is uh, very advantageous here just to stay ahead of the curve. And uh, you're going to see both runners executing that throughout here. This particular segment with the, the fireball guys, that's that's probably the most painful part of this run. Uh, casually, it's probably a nightmare. A lot of people would run into some trouble there, but eventually getting through pretty solidly, they're only taking the one hit, which is pretty much ideal. Uh, so no no problems there. And then, you know, obviously a little faster to, to take the chains whenever possible, just because you're able to jump up them faster than you are with the cloud. So you just have to know where the enemies are, kind of work your way around them, no problem. Ooh, having a little trouble with that one skeleton guy. Again, not really in a dire need to maintain the gem count here. You want to keep it relatively high, but it'll have opportunity 
uh, before the next boss to be able to get that level back up to full. See how Goofy does with the Fireball Gauntlet. Uh oh, he's getting juggled just a little bit. Uh oh, this could be in trouble for Goofy. Okay, phew! He got lucky there, kind of squeezed through, but he's uh, he's a very low on health, so we're going to see if he's able to get a little bit there. Again, some of these pumps are guaranteed health. Um, he's got to be extremely cautious right now. So he might be taking this extremely carefully to not take a death. Dying here, if he did save, would just put him right back at the beginning of the power climb. Uh, let's hope that he did that. And again, he knows where the health is, so he's going to grab whatever he can there on the way. Venge has now started the uh, next perilous part of this particular one. He's going to be doing a little bit of off screen here, but there is kind of a lower ceiling, so he's got to be very cognizant of that. Um, you just normally would bounce off the ceiling here, but it's hard to know when you can't see what you're doing, if, whether or not you've got your kind of recharge of the cloud there and you can fall back in just like you saw him do there. Um, and there's a lot going on with this particular screen. Sky Bridge is probably one of the more brutal parts of this run just because all these archers and you've got jerk birds that can appear that carry these bombs that do massive damage to you um you got these cycling platforms which again should be ignored in this particular run because of the fact that you've got the the cloud mechanic going for your favor the main thing is just try to keep your altitude and stay out of the way of all the projectiles because this damage does add up and you really don't want to lose again you really don't want to lose that level and your gem count in order to make sure that you're going to be you know in a good spot not that this boss necessarily requires you to do that because this is more of an auto scroller boss than anything and you're not able to do any sort of damage but you want to maintain it for the upcoming level and that's the important thing so good job by ben show to recover a lot of the things there and uh this boss is um at least a thing um in pretty much every version of this game he's basically what we call how to scroll with the boss yeah because there's nothing you can do to speed him up you have to cycles here and then there's a smidge of rng as to where the flaming ball is you need to knock into one of the cannons to be able to shoot it in his eyeball to actually cause him damage but it's always cycle based and you want the, that fireball to land on your side of the the rotating platform uh it doesn't always work that way so sometimes you gotta chase it down and optimally, what you see Benji doing currently is just bouncing those sheep back and forth so they hit the eyeball at the earliest opportunity. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's just uh, kind of goofing around with the boss. This boss has no threat. Um, this particular version, he doesn't really follow Shantae too well. Like he's got a certain limited distance where his reticles will go. And uh, you can just kind of goof around with it as long as you don't stand in place, you're not going to take a hit on this guy. Uh, so it's very advantageous. The only thing you really got to watch out for are the flying uh, rocks that he spits out you know, between phases in order to make sure you're not taking any damage here. He's, um, he's doing a really good job with this boss so far. He's getting some pretty good RNG in relation to where the fireball is. We've got uh, Goofy just now getting to that fight as well. We're going to see how he does as well. Again, he's going to goof off a little bit during this easy phase. It's like nothing better to do here. Oh, please, George, if you've got donations or something, man, cut, cut me off. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've done a lot of commentary, so I apologize if I'm overbearing a little bit. But this boss is kind of boring. I've pretty much said everything I can about it. Goofy is doing exactly what you need to do there between faces with the eyeballs. Just launch a sheep one way or the other. Make sure you hit that eyeball. I believe Bencha should be on the final phase of this guy. One more, one more fireball to the face, and this boss should be going down. Goodbye, Wilbur, on Benji's side. Goofy getting... Hmm? Are you... Uh, I'm not in the middle of my mic. Yeah, it was Goofy. It, okay, so what you just referred to as Benja was actually Goofy. So it, it, it's confusing because we had like a confusing with the two runners uh, in intermission with the stream keys. 
So the, the one who killed the boss earlier, that, that's Goofy's perspective. And he's on the right side on the screen, so just make sure it's on the right side on your end. Yeah, check, I, check, check the text channel. Yeah. He's Benjamin, it's a Switch one. Um, yeah, and she's hmm. running the Switch version, and so Goofy is currently still in the boss fight. That means the keys were swapped. Maybe. Yeah, that means Benja have, used have, Goofy's screen key. Yeah, ben, Benja cur currently is in the auto controller for Fate K for Station right now. Does your VLC um, title say Goofy? It says Benja. I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, you've got them. You've got them swapped on the screen. You need to switch the headers back. Okay, so I was wrong. Okay, good. You were you were right the first time. We'll put it that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so Bencha is in again another auto scroller. It's one thing that Way Forward really wanted to punish the speedrunning community for is because every time they threw an auto scroller at us in every of the Shantae games, we uh, we found a way to skip it. Um, so they basically force fed auto scrollers down our throats, uh, and a lot of them, pretty much all of them, are unskippable. We did find a way to skip a couple, but not very many. Um, so right now, basically, this is just a, a carpet race that uh, we're going to go and find the Ammo Baron to give him an invite to that slumber party. And, um, you know, first things first, we got to get through this carpet race, and uh, we're going to cheat a little bit. Bench is showing there, you know, we can't win if you're not in the race, so being the only racer left is the only way you actually win. <laughs> but now he's going to come up to Twitch and Vinegar, who we do want to extend an invite to, but they, uh, they're they not ready to, to go yet. They still have guard duty and have to do their duty. So again, a little rain of sheep there, no problem. The sheep are extremely useful when it comes to taking down those bosses, especially that one. He got a really good pattern. It grouped up nicely for the arc throw of that, and they just melted underneath uh, Barrage there. So. But he'll be moving on to the very next stage as I see Goofy's currently just about a quarter, about a third of the way into the next, or uh, that auto scroller section. So not too far behind, still pretty good competition. There is some things that can happen that can completely flip this around. But meanwhile, Bencha is uh, currently taking the, taking a little tour of all of the Ammo Baron's entire air fleet. Uh, they're trying to obviously stop her from progressing. They've got, you know, insta-kill laser beams and or electric arcs, basically, and, and cannons and stuff. And, of course, the guards are coming out to try to stop her as well. Uh, but again, with the cloud movement, you're able to kind of move through here pretty safely. There's just some parts where they actually force the ceiling down and you're, you have to kind of deal with whatever is being thrown at you there. Nothing too dangerous, though, as long as you know what. It's got a... Okay, his Cyclops a little scary with that, that laser beam pattern, but he got through it no problem. So you just have to be very careful there, because obviously any death here will actually take you back to the beginning of the screen. There's no checkpoints in the middle. Um, so if he does make a mistake of any sort, it'll actually put him all the way back to the beginning here. We'll see how Goofy does on his fight. Got a decent pattern from the girls, so was able to make it rain on their heads a little bit and took them down pretty quickly. All right, Bench is now inside the uh, the final part of this particular part. We go inside the airship. Try to take them out. Okay. Bye. Oh no, uh, looks like Bencha just took a laser beam death there, was getting a little aggressive coming around that corner. That's a little bit of a blind drop, you're not for sure if they're there. I'm talking, can you hear me? Not gonna be able to hear me. As uh, as he's navigating through here, obviously, again, the cloud's going to make some ascension of some of this a little bit easier, but not necessarily. I'm ignoring you then, George. <laughs> all right. And uh, obviously, the sheep are going to help us get through all of these particular parts, especially when they start to throw a lot of soldiers at us here. 
uh, no big problem for the sheep there. Again, wanting to try to maintain that magic meter a little bit. Ooh, nice save there. Didn't get a jump in, but almost fell in those spikes. The cloud did pull him out of that one. So we got uh, Goofy still navigating the outside of the ship. So he'll be making his way there shortly. Taking a little bit of damage, so he's got to be very careful because the uh, DPS output of these guys is pretty hefty. I think uh, body contact with soldiers, one full hurt. Um, so definitely a little bit painful, and uh, he'll have to definitely hunt out a few gems before getting up to that boss as uh, Bench is getting ready to come in to <laughs> come into the Ammo Baron fight. So we've extended, we've extended our invite. He wants to test your ability uh, in pillow fighting, so he, he's going to call in his soldiers to have the ultimate pillow fight. And again, it's going to be heavy dose of sheep. And we're going to make him count every last one until he's out as much as he can. Um, one the good thing about this is that you are able to kind of get a lot of these soldiers with this who actually do die in one hit from them. And what you're going to be looking for in this particular one, obviously, is gems to make sure that you're keeping your gem count up. And then alternately, what you want to see is some magic drops, which looks like Bench is getting stiff on a little bit. Fortunately, just had enough to be able to still take down the Ammo Baron in relatively short fashion. So, pretty decent fight coming on that end. We've got... Uh, Goofy still inside the ships, navigating the laser grids. Coming up on pretty much the last gauntlet of charging soldiers here before he starts navigating his way around. Getting hung up a little bit because of the uh, the arrival pattern in these guys, but getting some decent magic drops along the way, which is very useful. And he's not quite using the floating techniques to get over and around some of these guys. He's taking a little bit more cautious, but in a race, that's not, a, that's not an incorrect strat, obviously, because any death you take can be punishing as far as how far it takes you back. All right, so back on uh, Bench's side here, he is uh, visiting Roddy Tops and her, and her brothers uh, in their new mansion, basically to extend an invite to whomever she does come across here. Uh, this one adds a new kind of monster uh, to the game. These things are a little pain there. If you saw a spider that, that Bench has just ran into, um, one, they hurt. They take like an entire heart of damage and they block pretty much everything here. So ideal strat with this is to basically kind of try to damage boost through them without actually touching them. Um, there's another monster around that you can hit to get through them like a little bat like you just saw there will allow you enough iframes to get past the spider and only take two points of damage versus the four. But uh, again, navigating through that particular mansion is a little bit of a maze, but once you know the, the, the correct path to go, no problem there. And then so we'll move on to the graveyard, uh, which is a very intricate platforming segment. Again, this cloud is going to kind of negate a lot of the, the cycle-based stuff that you would normally have to deal with. You know, these eye platforms, basically, the direction you're looking at when you land on them, they start moving in that direction. Uh, with this cloud and the ability to float, you don't have to necessarily worry about them too much. And the main thing then after that is to dodge anything that gets thrown at you. Checking out Goofy here on that one. Okay, a little longer on the Ammo Baron fight, but still very safe, had plenty of magic, was able to keep a decent level going. And, oh, Bencha just taking a spike death there. And of course, spikes are insta-death, so you don't want to see that ever. Uh, it's a very tight jump, what he's doing there, going down beneath that. Um, you know, there's a death plane down there, but you can trigger the cloud just before it so that you can get underneath those spikes and still not take a, a, a fall there. So, well played on the second attempt there, no problem. He's a little tight on life there, taking it safe rather than the, the, the speed route going around that bat instead of between the two, which is probably the smartest thing to do there. Uh, can't fault him for that, considering where he's currently at on the health stink. Uh, the good news is he'll have a full health refill at the end as long as he doesn't get trolled too much by the enemies that are sitting there waiting by the door. We'll see how this plays out. Oh, yeah, and uh, now he just going by that little squid there that was floating reminded me. Um, very important. Oh, he's not going to go for the, the health refill. Okay. He's going to play this one extremely risky. He's going into this fight with basically 2 HP. Uh, anything can happen here. Good thing the first phase of this is no problem thanks to the sheep. I'm going to play it low. We'll see what happens here. This is the, the scary part. The sheep will get you through this fight. However, there's still potential to take us some damage. Yes, Risky and Shantae Melodia. That is correct. I might have been punning. <laughs> Okay. 
Goofy just now entering the graveyard section. He should be making his way through this particular thing. No problem. He's in a pretty decent place. Oh, until that bat stun locks him a little bit. We got a little bit of good health from uh, the squid bear and dropping some hearts for him there. So it's not necessarily RNG in that regard. I believe he alternates between dropping magic hearts and gems so he can keep your gem count up when you hit him. Uh, but now he's got to worry about uh, bouncing around or hovering around no baron again with a healthy dose of sheep he's no problem i think everyone has a wool allergy in this i think that's really what's going on and why the the, the sheep do so much damage have to give these guys a little bit of hydrocortisone for their skin or something you know after this is all said and done all right so yeah bencha no problem getting through this particular segment and uh, we'll be moving on towards basically the final stage, uh, which is also probably one of the more challenging ones as it relates to this speed run. A lot of technical movement that he's going to have to employ to get through there. We'll have to see how he handles Risky's Lair as uh, Goofy continues to work his way through. Good job with that particular skip of not having to use the platforms. And uh, both runners doing a great job, by the way, of uh, skipping all these dream squids. If you grab one, you lose about four seconds of time. Uh, they would normally be collected in like 100% route because uh, because it gives you an extra ending screen picture, basically. There's not really much gain outside of that. Uh, so good job on both of them right now so far on making sure they don't pick up any of those, just losing additional time in the any percent run. All right, so you know, a lot of spikes on the ceilings here in Risky's hideout. Uh, Spench is making his way through. Uh, the other thing to watch out for are these Tinker Bats, especially the ones flying on the copters. Their bullets do an entire heart of damage. So, you know, there's a big challenge here. There's basically a gauntlet, a lot of things coming your way. And again, you're trying to maintain that level as high as possible. So um, the minimal amount of hits you take, the more gems you've got, and you want to keep that high level to, to make sure that the ending fights go very, very, or the ending fight with uh, the final boss goes very quickly. So otherwise, you don't have the DPS you can kind of drag things out and get you know a little bit trickier. There's plenty of full health recharges, so health really isn't the concern here. It's just keeping that level going. And right now, it looks like Bench is in an okay spot. He's about 15 gems down, so it's it's scary. There's not a lot of good pot opportunities in this particular area to, to keep those levels up. Uh, he's just basically trying to make it through without taking any hits and going at, at speed at this moment in time. Again, just kind of fishing for that additional one. Some of these pots are RNG, can never guarantee that you're always going to get a gem from them. Some of them are guaranteed hearts, and other ones are kind of a uh, hit or miss. All right, checking in on Goofy here, we got the Google Baron spike just down for the beginning part of phase two, no problem. A little trouble getting the sheep on, the, on Hypno there. Taking a few hits there, but you know, if you can get those bouncing in there, good shot. All right, good job by Goofy on that. Pretty decent on the gem count as well. Uh, should be in a decent spot to be able to get himself back up the full as he's going to be heading into the final stage as well. All right. Ooh, oh, that's always a scary jump right there. What Benja just did going underneath that spike platform like that. It's extremely tight. You know, you're not sure when that hitbox is going to engage. Looks like he's going to be a little short on the final boss, but he's still level three. Level three should be plenty to be able to take good care of this final boss here. And we've got our last invite to extend to Risky Boots, who respectfully declines and uh, doesn't really want to, to, to do that. So parting, party pooping pirate indeed. So timing these sheep is, is kind of important with this because there's a lot of RNG in regards to how Risky is going to move. Um, like what she does pattern wise is pretty much the same. She's going to do shots. She's going to do these charges and things like that on a, uh, on a regular interval. But where she jumps during the jumping phases is, is always a thing. But no problem. I bencha as he just destroys Risky Boots there and takes it down. Um, so, you know, she's still kind of refusing to go to the party, especially after we just pounded her face with a pillow. Uh, and wants to take us down, so now we've got to kind of escape her hideout, and the only way we can do that is through an auto scroller. Um, so again, looks like Bench is going to have a lot of fun with this. He's going to do the the cloud hovering here on the far end. And we are going to be coming up on time very shortly. So if you're listening, George. Get ready on that. Uh, we'll be calling that as soon as the screen turns full white. At the end of this auto scroller. Keep an eye on uh, Goofy here while he's navigating his way through this final segment. 
dealing with the Tinkerbat barrage and uh, getting beat up a little bit, not gonna lie, but you know, he should be able to at least keep a level three. A level three is good enough to, to be able to take Risky down quickly. And as long as he's able to maintain that about 100 gems or more, he should be okay. As I look over at Bencha, he's still just maintaining that nice little cloud hover there and uh, not having to worry about all the platforming that the game wants you to do. As uh, Shantae's just going to talk about a few things she's just constantly sighing in my ears i have his audio up on my end and that's all i'm hearing is her yawn and time for bencha yeah time for bencha 30 47. yeah gg to bencha now gg on that one <laughs> Yeah, grass the bench on that was a really good run, really, really good time, actually. I think that's still two minutes faster than even mine. Really, really solid run. Now we're going to keep an eye on Goofy here as he navigates his way through the rest of Risky's lair. He'll be coming up on the uh, the boss fight for her really soon. Um, as we get kind of the ending stuff there, some really cute dialogue that occurs with that. And ultimately, what we find out is that Risky decided, you know what, she did want to be part of the party. And not only did she just come over, she's actually offering up her boat as a place for everyone to go to. So happy endings for everyone on that end. And again, GG to Bencha on a very, very good run. I see Goofy took a, a fall in the lava there as he's uh, taking things just a little bit slower in regards to that. I can see why he's still trying to maintain his gem count. His heart situation's a little sketchy too. Um, the, uh, the shooter. Tinker Bats being an extreme danger for him there, but uh, makes it through to, I believe, the risky fight at this point. Yep, he's up the risky fight. Fight. He's got just over 100 gems, which puts him at level three. He can't afford too any or too many hits uh, on risky to, to maintain that. Uh, so we'll see how his fight goes with risky boots here. Hey, hey, Bench, it's GG on that run. That was a really good run. <laughs> Defense. Uh, it's uh, city and 27. What's that? 17. 17. 30, 17. 49. Okay. It's only. You said 30, 47 is what you got him for. <laughs> that is a ridiculous marathon run in a race setting and a marathon setting. It's incredible. <laughs> no, it's the other. And that person on risk. Yeah, Goofy ran out of magic during this fight, so he didn't have any sheep to throw out. And he's just right now just trying to maintain. And he's oh no, takes a grenade to the head from Risky and takes a death. And I should Hopefully probably enable my save. mic, because I'm not on an RTMP stream. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. The game, the amount will okay. give you, you a save. save at least beforehand. <laughs> Hang in there, Goofy. You can do it. You got it. You got this. Goofy's on level three. Yeah. Yeah, he's got yeah, a level he, three. He can. He gonna go uh, a really good fight. Risky's just playing dodge sheep though. She's doing a really good job of staying away from all the sheep at this moment. And his magic was pretty low at one point. Like I say, he ran out of magic, so he didn't have anything to throw at her. Mm. And being level two, he's only allowed to have two sheep out at any given time. That's why maintaining the level is important, so you can really get those sheep out, you know, on her. Uh, it's really in the corner, which is good to see. There we go. Now he got her. Great second effort there by Goofy, no problem whatsoever, able to get her down. And we'll be going into his auto scroller to Vic, you know, to, to, to GG. And then we'll see how he oh, yeah. handles it here. And time was oh, this is not time yet? Not no. yet. He's okay. just now in the auto scroller. Sorry, I just saw a white screen, so I was like, oh. <laughs> so Goofy seems to be opting for the more traditional route. Oh, I can't, uh, he's I'm gonna, gonna play actually it. slide. He's gonna play it. 
He's he's making sure that the the Shantae's pajamas are actually splinter proof. Sliding down all of these wind, these wooden planks here. And he's using the cloud to kind of get over some of the more difficult jumps, but for the most part, he's actually taking it very traditional. Good on him. No cheese for this guy. The only thing he's got to worry about is just not taking a fall down a pit, which in this mode, that would not be a good thing to have happen, considering that you've got an out. All right, that's kind of the last perilous part here. One last area to get through, and he's going to take the ring all the way down to the end here. Yeah, this is, this is TV. Time for Goofy. That and was that a 30. A I can confirm on the restream side, that was a 35 for 59. 35 59. So yeah. good job, Goofy. And Is that a PB? On the PB. In oh a marathon my God. race setting. <laughs> oh, All right. Oh, welcome to having speedruns life. Uh, what on your leaderboard? <laughs> 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 That's great. All right, unfortunately, Great. this means that, um, unfortunately, <laughs> this is really sad, but I can't drag Goofy in as a user unless I would mute game audio completely. But if Goofy wants to join, he can, but then we can't have any game audio. Because uh, then it would echo on stream, but yeah, that, would be that is Goofy's decision. Wait. Just let me know what the intentions are. I should probably stop the timer. <laughs> Today is not <laughs> not a day for me. And I believe I also have my mic muted again. No, I don't. Not this time. Wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I've actually never done this kind of like audio capture. Because if we didn't do this, then uh, JT's commentary would have been 15 seconds delayed. And I think given the quality of his commentary, that was well worth it. <laughs> can we just... <laughs> Just huge clap for that right now, but holy, like I've n I I know a little too much about the entire Shantae <laughs> series. Sorry. All right. <laughs> so, Goofy's asking where yeah. he can join. Yeah, I don't see any game audio, so I'm just gonna mute the. Uh, if Goofy wants oh, to join, then. Uh, He's wait. in general. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, hey Goofy, GG. Congrats on the PB. Hey. Hey. Oh god, that final choke there was. Horrible! I don't know why I panicked there. Uh, still uh, PB though. Risky fight. Still, it's still, yeah, PB. still it's PB. more important. It's more important. Yeah, could be way, way, way better. But well, I, I at least I got a PB. That's the happy thing. And good race, man. <laughs> good race, thank you. Right, if, yes. you if you, if <laughs> yeah, wanna, really you guys wanna shout yeah, out oh. your community and stuff, because I gotta set up some stuff for the intermission. Um. Uh, well, shout out to our group of uh, <laughs> friends. The Shantai uh, Discord. The Shantai Discord. Yeah. yeah. It's a really lovely community. Um, one of the best community I ever joined. It. Uh, I feel really proud of be part of it. And well, uh, all my. Well, Benja and I, we had a mutual server, server Discord with a lot of friends. That is the Elysium server. That yes. is the, the whole the or Chileans, or Chileans friends <laughs> that all we live in Chile. So, um, yeah, the shout outs to them. Uh, big and friends. And of course, shout out to Nori to comment on this one. Yeah, Th thank thanks, you a lot. <laughs> thank you a lot to, to comment this. Our English sucks. JT, yeah, when you okay, can't comment this in Turkey. I just want to count <laughs> out. I, I, just keep... I need to call mm -hmm. this out. JT went absolutely ham on the commentary. That was top 1A commentary. Uh, Very top tier commentary. Yeah, Nori knows a lot of stuff of Shante. Uh, <laughs> He's, he runs uh, the original Shante. He run, runs a uh, pilot course. Uh, uh, I don't know if he runs I've, uh, Halkini I, I've, Hero. I've run every single game in the Shante series, and I've got a time <laughs> for all. I have a time for all the. Co 
modes as well. I need to get back to some of those because I could definitely do better in some. But yeah, I mean, I run the entire series, and um, you know, if if anyone is interested in more Shantae, as these guys called out, feel free to to look up the Way Forward speedrunning Discord and uh, look out for the Shantae relay coming up on August the thirty first. Oh yeah, the relay of yeah. Shantae relay. Yeah. I... That's the big, right. big thing, a uh, nice one. <laughs> but thanks for the All race, right. guys. That was awesome. It was a pleasure to commentate the great race between you two. Yep. Uh, thanks, Neon. Thanks. thanks for running, everyone. Uh, and uh, thanks, and everyone, to watching this uh, race. And well, uh, keep with the... Uh, yeah, I keep donating. The, the next the game morphs. is now Git suck for... Oh my god, really. Uh, <laughs> just little monster. Alright, uh, no, the next right, the next run is uh, uh, right. Nickelodeon cooking contest. Wait. Nickelodeon cooling... Oh, what are we talking about? Nickelodeon cooking contest. Oh, oh, oh I want oh, to see oh, that. I forgot. I'm Nickelodeon cooking <laughs> Yeah, the next run is Nickelodeon cooking contest. Yes, I... I, I, I... <laughs> You should. It's a great <laughs> meme game. It's probably it's one of the it's one of these like flash games that are so bad but actually good. You should watch that because I'm gonna be racing burgers and burgers put a dollar on beating me. So burgers, game. get ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, for everything. We'll be going on a mission. Thanks for running, everyone. Okay. See ya. See ya. See ya. Two, three, four. Oh. All right. I hope I timed that correctly because uh, it is it is a little bit hard to time with a Discord audio capture and everything. So hopefully I timed all of that correctly. But um, just so everyone knows, this is going to be a self restreamed race, which essentially means I'm restreaming, but I'm also going to be racing burgers, and these are one of the hardest things to set up. So this intermission might take a little bit uh, to top it off. Unfortunately, this game does. It, essentially, the OSD of this game is uh, like it isn't even on YouTube, so I can't even play it currently. And unfortunately, I didn't have the foresight to uh, look at that to you know actually down you know record it myself. So unfortunately, I will have to. There will be no music for this probably ten full full ten minute intermission. I do apologize for that, but.
put on feet too. I can actually put my own I'm gonna give them a quick update. Alright, so as I said uh, as I said earlier, um setting up a dual race while you're restreaming yourself is taking a little bit longer, so do do stand by